come. Remember the old saying, too many cooks spoil the broth. I don't believe it. There were plenty of time that when I spoiled the broth all by myself. <laughs> I believe in the new saying, two cooks are better than one. Or just to be on the safe side today. I'm not gonna make any broth. <laughs> of course, we might make a little bit mess. Today, the show is gonna be fun. And I want everybody here to have fun. I want you at home to have fun. So make sure you stay there for the next 30 minutes. Now, first of all, I want to show you how to do a dish. I think this is a wonderful dish. This dish I call Big Stuff Mushroom. I kind of make up this dish because one day I have some leftover rice and I don't know what to do with it. So I decided to do Big Stuff Mushroom. I don't know how many of you in the studio audience or whether you at home have ever tried this before. But this is the second time I have tried it. I hope I can make it. <laughs> now, first of all, you gotta have all kind of stuffing. Here, I have some chopped mushroom. I'm gonna get a knife and chop up some mushroom. In the meantime, I am gonna heat up my wok because I have to stir fry this stuffing. While you're chopping, you gotta look at what is going on in the wok. <laughs> ah, that is okay. <laughs> now, this is also great exercise. If you need more exercise, all you have to do is, you, you only need one mushroom. All you have to do is just keep going. <laughs> it depends on how long, depends on how many calories you want to burn up. You can do it all day. Then you have, what you call finely minced mushroom, <laughs> otherwise a costly chopped mushroom. <laughs> now, aside from this, I also have some chopped carrot, about two tablespoons chopped carrot, two tablespoons to three tablespoons chopped zucchini, and some chopped cooked shrimp. And also, one chopped, one stalk of green onion also chopped. Now, this is very easy to do. First of all, when the wok is hot enough, let's turn it up, hi. Put a tiny bit of oil, not much, exactly half a teaspoon up to one and a half teaspoon up to two teaspoon. See, very flexible. And then put, oh, also, you need a tiny bit of garlic. So we also slice up some garlic and press this and go. Still watching your walk. <laughs> Done. And put it over here. Start putting all the ingredients, shrimp, okay? This, you, you gotta get your filling ready first because you gotta cook it and let it cool down, okay? Put all this ingredient in. Carrot, zucchini, green onion, and then a tiny bit of, about half a teaspoon of salt and a dash of white pepper. And then move them around, stir. And then you can actually toss the thing around like this. Make sure you catch it. Okay. And then put some rice, leftover rice from yesterday. Okay. Stir, stir, and stir. The great thing about this is this is actually a dish. Do you agree? This is actually fried rice with minced prawn and mushroom. This is actually a dish by itself. So that means if you ran out of patience, you don't want to bother to stuff your mushroom. You stuff yourself with this stuff. <laughs> See? Okay, beautiful. And then you shut it off. After you shut it off, you put the egg. I have two eggs. This would make it easier for you to stuff into the mushroom. You see this? Okay. See? Nice, moist. Look at beautiful. We'll put it over here. Put it over here. And you put it over here. See, the egg is not totally cooked. We'll put this aside. We'll put this over here so everybody, I want to show everybody. Okay. Now, it's very important. Then you start to stuff the mushroom. Here, I have one mushroom, two mushroom, and then you open it very carefully. You want to break the mushroom. Juggle it around, 
remove these, juggle this around, remove these, and then you use a spoon to push these over here. Now make sure you have a nice smooth mushroom. You see this? Each birthday, I would use one of these mushrooms. And that's enough to make about 28 mushrooms. <laughs> one for each of my birthday. I've been celebrating my 28th birthday for 25 years. <laughs> you see, one. The great thing about this is, if you have time, you do it by yourself. You don't have time. You should ask some help. For 28 of these, I won't want to have this for dinner. <laughs> Otherwise, I will have dinner in the year 2001. <laughs> Fortunately, my brother Michael came here a little bit early and gave me a hand to stuff some of these mushrooms. So we can put this in the oven and bake it. OK. And we'll bake this for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Now, the great thing about this is time passed by very fast. <laughs> this is basically. Now, the next thing is important is to make sure the, the important thing is when you do it, make sure the stuffing is nice and smooth. And this is the right stuff. Don't make it sloppy stuff, otherwise the stuff is all going all over the place. OK. The next thing is you want to make a sauce. And the sauce, you can use the juice from the mushroom, OK? And then also use about a teaspoon of sesame seed oil. And also use a tiny, tiny bit of wine. And then the mushroom juice is very tasty. Then thicken it up with cornstarch. One portion of cornstarch to about two to three portion of water, OK? Stir this, make it into a thickening. Make sure it is thickened enough. OK. Let's put it over here. And then, when it's done, you put it on top of this gorgeous mushroom. Look at how beautiful. You see? Next, I am going to cook some seafood. But let's go down to the fish market and see what is fresh, OK? <laughs> This is my second home, a fish market. I love fish so much, I could have it every day. I'm going to show you some more popular saltwater fish that I love. This is snapper. And here we have a king-size red snapper. Look at how humongous this is. And this is a white bass. And this is red sole. This sand depth, yellow tail, ship head, striped bass, and galloper here. Now, tips for fresh fish. The first sign of a fresh fish is you look at the eye, look at how shiny, how clear. If it is opaque and cloudy, the fish is not fresh. Tips number one. Tips number two, you open the gale to make sure it's nice and bright red. That means it's nice and fresh. If it's dull and brown, it's old. Third, you got to poke it into the muscle. If it's firm and springy, it kind of bounces your finger. That means this is nice and fresh. Last tip on freshness. You, of course, sniff a little bit and smell it. Mmm, it smells like an ocean breeze. It doesn't smell like a fish. If it smells fishy, it's not a live, fresh fish. So tips for freshness, and I'm going to show you how to do a wonderful fish dish today. I was going to bring that beautiful, giant, king-size red snapper back to the studio, but I left the dancing in the taxi. <laughs> if any of you taxi driver there are watching the Yang King Cook Show right now, please pay extra attention. If it doesn't smell like fresh ozone breeze in your cap, <laughs> please give me a call right away. <laughs> now, the next dish is, I want to show you, this is actually a red snapper. Some, it's actually become, um, belong to the rock fish family. 
This is a smaller one because that don't think is too heavy to carry. Don't think. Can you imagine carrying a big gigantic fish around Chinatown? Bring it back over here. They think you're nuts. <laughs> now, basically, I cut it into about three quarter an inch to one inch thick, like a stick. Then I marinate it with about two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of dark soy sauce, and also one tablespoon of Chinese rice wine or dry sherry, and also one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice, and also a tiny, tiny bit of five spice powder. And I'm ready because I'm heating up this heavy duty skillet. I'm gonna brush a tiny bit of sesame seed oil over here. Sesame seed oil. Sesame, instead of using butter, I use sesame seed oil. Okay, Chinese stuff. And then here, I have some wonderful spices. Blackened salt. Here is a mixture of two teaspoons of black pepper and about one and a half teaspoon of chili powder, hot stuff. And also one teaspoon of toast Sichuan peppercorn. Also, three quarter teaspoon of five spice powder, and also a tiny bit of salt, and a tiny bit of cornstarch. Now, this is so hot, the fish is getting very excited. <laughs> in order to calm it down, you should put this in the, you should put this fish in the fridge for a little while. The idea of doing this allow the seasoning to really penetrate to the whole thing, okay? Then you blacken this like this, with a tiny, tiny bit of oil, not much. So. I cut down the calorie. So I use oil instead of butter. I blacken it like this. Look at this. Very, very hot. Very hot. Now, the important thing is when you are doing this, make sure to turn on your exhaust fan. <laughs> Otherwise, you are bl blackened more than the fish. You're going to blacken your eye, your kitchen, your whole house. So make sure you turn on the exhaust fan. Can you see the smoke? Come, come. And then, look at how fast you can actually do it. Because this is very, very heavy. It's heavy metal. I can't even lift the dumb thing. Can you how heavy the dumb thing is? Turn this upside down. Can you see how nice and black? Can you see that? You can actually see this right away. You do it about two and a half to three minutes on each side. Can you see that? Beautiful. Very easy to do it. Then, after it's ready, you can roll this out. Of course, you, you can roll this out. This is raw fish. Roll this raw fish out. It is what you call, it is only rock and roll. But I like it. <laughs> okay, now if you really want to make it look wonderful, you should serve it like this. Let me show you. Make it nice and fancy. You should serve it with some lemon, Look at beautiful dish. You see that? Now, the next dish I want to show you is a very, very interesting, unique dish that I have developed last week just for you <laughs> and you. Prawn with fragrant tea leaf. And it's very, very easy because everybody knows that Chinese, most Chinese are tea drinkers. They drink tea with the dim sum lunch, they drink tea at the end of the meal. And also, I don't know how many of you know that the Chinese also use tea as an ingredient in the dishes to cook. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do it. First, you gotta start with good quality tea leaf. And I grant this done thing is $94 a pound. <laughs> because you at home, you're worth it. <laughs> For myself, $1.75 a pound. Ground it up in a little mortar. Okay, into a nice powder like this. This is oolong tea, good quality oolong tea. And then you marinate the tea leaf. You marinate this prawn with approximately one egg white, two teaspoons of dry sherry, up to a tablespoon of dry sherry, and also a tiny bit of salt, dash of pepper, and a tiny bit of cornstarch. Then you can steam it. We're gonna steam it over here in boiling. Wonderful, you see, this time, we do not need a bamboo steamer because we have a little steam rack here, you see? We're gonna put this over here and let it steam. When it's ready, we are gonna make the sauce. Here, I have quarter of a cup of chicken broth, tiny bit of salt and pepper, and a tiny bit of Xiaoxing wine, and a tiny bit of tea leaf. Now you gotta use a nice, good quality tea leaf. You don't want to use cheap stuff like this. <laughs> don't get caught 
holding the back. And then you make a sauce. Look at this. You make a sauce. When it's done, you stir this, and you stir this, and then we'll set this aside. If you want to have extra flavor, all you have to do is put a tiny bit of mint leaf. You see that? You can also have a choice of using orange spice, lemon spice tea to make this. When it's done, you pull these over. Let me move this. You pull this over the wonderful prawn, which is already done. All you have to do is pull this all over here. Look at this. How beautiful. Very unique dish. Now is the moment we have been all waiting for. I'm finally getting some help in this kitchen. So please welcome the owner of the famed Chef Chu's restaurant in the San Francisco Bay Area and author of this wonderful cookbook, Chef Chu's Distinctive Cuisine of China, my good friend, Chef Larry Chu. Welcome to the Young Chu Cook Show. to be here. So, Larry. We have known each other for hundreds and hundreds of years. And I know that you were born in Sichuan. I know that this particular dish you're going to show us is one of the most popular, the four-star dish in your restaurant. What, what is it? Can you well, tell us Well, actually, a it's a Sichuan style of tangerine beef. What we have here, of course, that, uh, we need a uh, preserved tangerine. Of course, you don't have a preserved tangerine, you can use the dry tangerine, it's fine. Uh, first, though, we have to uh, soak in the warm water, so let them uh, reconstitute it so we can, uh, the flavor will release and oh, will start. Nice. And then, of course, we need a beef, flank steak, which is, you're good at it. <laughs> you know, He's making me nervous well, already. By watching your shoulder time, we get to kind of, uh, every time it looks so, like a uh, So, first of all, we got to cut this up, we got to marinate this, right. and then we're going to make a sauce. This is a very unique dish. So, you're going to do it. I am going to help my good friend Larry to do it. Should I cut this up for you while you're getting ready for the, um... Well, you're good at it. I watched you did it before. No, I'm Let's just helping to... you. I'm not, because, not you. because I'm good, because I'm helping you. All right. Let's cut see it the diagonally. While I'm cutting this up, why don't you tell everybody what we're going to need for the marinade? Okay, <laughs> the purpose of a marinade is trying to tenderize the meat, give the flavor to the meat. What we need is a two tablespoons soy sauce. And of course, we'll need a little bit of water, two tablespoons of water. Trying to tenderize the meat, give it more, more moisture to the beef, and then have a little oil set aside, and a pinch, little bit of white pepper. We'll give a flavor to it. And of Larry. course, I have a little cornstarch right here. That goes a little later. I am what? done. Let's that, put, that was a fast, nice please, too. Put it over Marry there. it together, all the flavor penetrate into the beef. Okay, this is the purpose of uh, giving a flavor to the beef, and also will tenderize the beef, and this way we immediately will give it a little cornstarch. The, the purpose of cornstarch is try to give a body to the beef. To body, give a give body to the beef. Shiny, shiny glaze and to sew in the juice. That's right, we try to Perfect. keep the juice inside the beef. And then we'll just put some oil. Tiny bit oil of oil. Will help Why do you put oil over there? Because once you put oil in there, the beef will be able to separate it. <laughs> Imagine this, after beef been cut up, marinated, they're all glued together. The next technique I want to share with the, your viewer is the oil blanching process. Oil blanching technique? Well, I know you never heard about oil blanching. I never heard of it. I agree. I agree. You heard about water blanching. Actually, it's a partial cooking. Right now, let me see the temperature's right or not. Oh, it's hot. 350 degrees. 375 degrees to be exact. You well, said. That, that because it's no longer like old math that put your finger in there to tell the you know, temperature. We have an electric walk right here. We can set a temperature, the temperature we want it. Oil blanching, the purpose of it is that you're cooking the oil, you're able to separate the oil, you can able to separate the beef to create a light uniform outside to keep the juice inside. This is a little different than the normal oil blanching process. As you know, Chinese cooking, not just the nice flavor, aroma, also the texture. This particular beef we want it blanch it a little bit longer. But a lot of people are probably concerned, would that absorb too much oil in this well, particular case? No fear, because no you fear. don't have a water thing. About the it. oil just like a bridge. We take the beef out, we can oil, use the oil again and again. So we Good. didn't waste any oil. What we're trying to do is try to create a texture. So this one, what we want is a little bit, we'll give you another 15 seconds. 15 seconds? Why, why we're doing, can we cut some? Uh, why we're doing that, we're gonna cut up some garlic. Let's chop up some garlic. All right. Let's do it all together. <laughs> wow. All right, we'll 
Oh, that all could get it. Perfect. Let's put it all okay. over here. All right, let's go back a little bit. What else is in the uh, ingredient? I'm Wouldn't getting more nervous after this. <laughs> well, being a professional chef, Set it what up. we do this day in, day out. No yeah, big you, deal. This is a very, very popular restaurant technique. You see the beef is all separated. You can tell they're almost a charcoal outside. Okay. Very much well done Let's inside. Set aside. We want to set aside. In the meantime, I'm heating this up for you too. Thank you. Garlic. Okay, besides we had a main ingredient, which is beef, and then we need a complement ingredient and spices. In this particular item, we do not need a complement ingredient. What we need is the spices. One of the spices, of course, is preserved tangerine peel. If yeah, you don't have it, you can make a peel one. Peel it right here so everybody okay, can see what we're doing. we don't need that much. Doing. That's all we need. All we need is that much. It all depends. If you want more, you put a little more. Okay, I keep that for myself. <laughs> and you just you need the citron pepper. I'm going to keep this for myself, okay? And of course, we need a dry so I can pepper. Use dry pepper. A little bit of four few, few pieces like this. I'm learning. Set aside. From one, two, three, four. Four pieces set aside. Okay, now, the first thing first, we'll put some oil in this spatula here. Yeah, okay. The great thing about it is you can use the same oil. That's perfect. That's yeah, so oil again and again. The purpose again of oil blanching is just try, try to separate the beef, try to create the texture we wanted. And the first thing we we'll do, we don't want it too hot this time. What we're trying to do, we'll put some citron peppercorn in there. Citron pe peppercorn is a very aromatic ingredient. It's, it's not hot, isn't it? And also, they had a special effect. If we put too much or if we let them free come out too much, not only can smell, what happened is they have a tinkling effect. Tinkling? It tinkling, will be tinkling for days. Tinkling. That's why it makes That's a sutran dish so different. That's a not very. Just, okay, now, you, we have quite a few of the pepper in there. Pepper. We don't want it. We don't want that just a hot, spicy hot. We want the aroma from Flavor the pepper. Flavor and aroma. That's aroma wonderful. of the pepper. So you don't want it to get too hot. We want to brown it. We don't want to burn. Just brown it, lightly brown it, and this time we we'll put it this way in there. Same. As a matter of fact, I think. Where can you find the uh, the dry tangerine peel? As a matter of fact, you can, in your backyard. Oh well, I, I'm just kidding. Of course, it, it's, it's, it's uh, widely available throughout. The I remember, I remember uh, when I was uh, a little kid, my mom dried this all the time. I understand that your restaurant serve a lot of Sichuan and Hunan dishes. A lot of people probably do, do not understand what is the difference between Sichuan and Hunan cuisine. A terrific question. A Sichuan and Hunan basically they are the similar. They are hot, but in hot in different way. Hunan known for their banquet dishes, the gigantic banquet dishes, and a Sichuan is known for home cooking. Home cooking. You see, Sichuan is known for their distinctive spices. When you have a 20 different spices blended mixed together. We we'll created thousands, hundreds of different styles. Well, let, let, let's mix some spices, please. Spices. Soy sauce, sugar. Soy sauce, sugar. Soy sauce, sugar. All together. One to two tablespoons of soy sauce. Mix them all together. This is sugar. Well, yeah, One sugar teaspoon of sugar. Okay, right here. You see, the beef, the, one, the way we want oil blanching is have a little browning process. The beef is a little bit, of, it's not a tender anymore, but it has a nice chewing, of good feeling. Put in there. This is one of the most popular dish, not only in your restaurant, but all over America. China. Huh? All over China. Well, that's I like that. All over China, not just all over America. <laughs> Big, wonderful dish. Most of people were wondering at this time, how come you put so much broth in there, so many sauce in there? We try to let the beef absorb that's the so. flavor. Oh, the reason is because when you're doing the oil blanching, you kind of reduce some of the moisture. Now the old mo the beef is kind of reabsorbed the sauce. That's a wonderful idea. May I have With, this in May please? I? Sure. When the, when the sauce reduces the half. See, two cooks is better than one. Well, the French chef do like this, while Chinese do like this. You can do it anyway. You can do it sideways, front, back, sideways. You can move, move them around. As you can see, the sauce, they can reduce. Yeah, that's the sauce definitely. all absolutely absorbed by the beef, it's time to move. Okay. This, this look, can think, you smell in the studio? It's absolutely wonderful. This is beautiful. Talk, talk about the smell. Actually, it's just timing involved. Not just what's in there, the timing involved. Timing Larry, is not how high Larry, how is. about how about a partnership, Larry? You do the cooking, I will do the tasting. Fantastic, <laughs> look at this. Look how beautiful. Just absorb in here. Again, you know, you look at the recipe, you know there's a pepper in there. Yeah, you know, you probably noticed that Larry have 
before we start Larry have done some garnishing with some nice kumquat and some cucumber and put them all together now the dish looks beautiful can everybody see how beautiful the dish is isn't it beautiful now cooking should be a sharing experience and you share it in the dining table and you share it in the kitchen like me and Larry thank you thank you so much for joining us today on the Yen Can Cook and special thanks from my good friend Master you, Chef Larry Chu for Pleasure sharing with us this wonderful dish. Larry, if you can hang around a little bit longer, we have a lot of dirty dishes. <laughs> so, if Yen can and Larry can, so, so you can you. you. <laughs> Join me. That's it. That's it.